Here are some examples of problems about increasing and decreasing functions. Problem 1. Find the intervals where f of x equals x cubed minus 3x plus 2 is increasing and decreasing. To solve this problem, we first need to find the derivative of f. f prime of x is equal to 3x squared minus 3, and, and that's it. So to find out where f is increasing and decreasing, we need to know when f prime is positive or negative. So it's increasing when 3x squared minus 3 is larger than 0. And to solve this inequality, we can divide both sides by 3 to get x cubed minus 1. Sorry, that's x squared minus 1 is larger than 0, or x squared is greater than 1. And this happens whenever x is greater than 1 or x is less than minus 1. Then to find out when the derivative is negative, we have 3x squared minus 3 less than 0. So x squared minus 1 is less than 0 by dividing by 3, and then x squared is less than 1, or x is in the interval minus 1, comma 1. So f increases on the interval minus infinity, comma, minus 1, union with the interval 1, comma, infinity, and decreases on the interval minus 1, comma, 1. Notice that this information also tells us that minus 1 is a local maximum and 1 is a local minimum of this function. Problem 2. Find the intervals on which f of x equals x plus 1 to the 2 thirds increases and decreases, and find all extrema. First, the derivative, f prime of x, is equal to 2 thirds times x plus 1 to the minus 1 third times 1. And this is just equal to 2 divided by 3 times the cube root of x plus 1. Now to find out when the function f is increasing, let's solve the inequality 0 is less than 2 over 3 times the cube root of x plus 1. If we multiply both sides of this equation by 3 halves, it's the same as 0 less than 1 over cube root of x plus 1. But we know that taking 1 over a number doesn't change its sign, so this is equivalent to saying 0 is less than the cube root of x plus 1. Now if we take both sides to the third power, we get 0 is less than x plus 1. Notice that taking a number to the third power doesn't change its sign either, since minus 1 to the third is still minus 1. Now this means that for minus 1 less than x, the function f will be increasing. Now let's solve the other inequality for when f is decreasing. If 0 is greater than 2 over 3 times cube root of x plus 1, we can do the same thing and say this is equivalent to 0 is greater than 1 over cube root of x plus 1 by multiplying both sides by 3 halves. And since none of the things we did in the previous inequality changed the sign, we can do the same things here. So we get that 0 is greater than x plus 1 by inverting and cubing it. And then this gives us minus 1 is greater than x. So now we know that f is increasing when x is larger than minus 1 and decreasing when smaller than minus 1. This also tells us that x equals 0 is actually a minimum of f. So this is one of the extrema. Now, can there be others? Well, the derivative is always going to be non-zero since the numerator is 2. So no matter what the denominator is, the fraction will always be greater than 0, or less than 0. And the only point where the derivative doesn't exist is at x equals 0, which we have already determined as a minimum. So f decreases from minus infinity up to minus 1. Sorry, the minimum is at x equals minus 1, not x equals 0. There we go. Because the denominator of f prime is 0 when x plus 1 is equal to 0, not when x equals 0. So it increases then from minus 1 to infinity, and that's what the function is like.